Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're going to be talking about arcs and chords for circles. Just a quick recap. A point is any place in space. It doesn't have length, width, depth, or any dimensions really. It's just a point in space and it's represented usually by a dot and a capital letter. For example, we would say this is the point A. A plane is usually represented using a parallelogram and some kind of cursive letter, like a cursive H in the corner. And that would be the plane H. We could also label a plane by having three points inside the plane. For example, if this were A, point B, and point C, we'd call this plane plane ABC, CBA, BAC, BCA, it doesn't matter, or plane H. Today we are going to discuss um, labeling parts of a circle, identifying and calculating arc length, and then identifying inscribed angles and central angles. The Pennsylvania standard is the 11th grade standard to identify and use properties of arc semicircles, inscribed angles, and central angles. When we're labeling the parts of a circle, what we want to point out mainly are a couple of different points. Here, I've got them here. Different, a radius is the distance from the center to the circumference or the, any point along the outside of the circle. So CA or AC is one radius, CB and CD are all examples of radius. Diameter is the distance from one point on the circle through the center to the other side of the circle. So AD or DA would be the diameter for this circle. A chord is a point inside the circle or a line inside the circle that touches two points of the circle. So this is an example ED of this chord. The arc ED, ed, goes from E to D but is the around the outside there, the circumference of the circle between those two points. So partial circumference. And that's what we're going to be looking at a lot today is the chords and the arcs. One more thing about circles and that's that the central angles will always equal 360 degrees. So a semicircle is 180 degrees and that would be from here all the way around to here, 180 degrees. And then I've, I've just cut this one in half to be 90 degree and 90 degree, making a total of 360 degrees on the interior or central angles of this, of this circle. When you're given that piece of information, you'll sometimes be asked to find a missing angle. For this question, we have uh, 360 degrees inside the, all of the angles inside of this circle. We know that um, from A across here it is 180 degrees. So to find the missing length, we could say 360 minus 180, which gives us 180. So we know from here to here is 180 degrees. And if we subtract 52 degrees from there, we would end up with 128 degrees. That's going to be the measurement labeled here with that question mark. So that's the, the angle measurement. And again, you can find any central angle as long as you're given other central angles and you remember that even if it's not written like it was in this one, there are 360 degrees in the central angles of circles. Now let's change gears just a little bit and talk about the arc. Remember the arc is the distance from one point on the circle to another point on the circle. If those points are a diameter, we could call this the arc of the diameter, it's also known as a semicircle, right? Ha exactly half of a circle. And that is exactly 180 degrees of an, in a central angle. 180 degrees. 
and it goes from one point on the diameter all the way around to the other point. It's called a semicircle. There are points that are less than the semicircle, smaller, like this point ED. And because we have E here and D here, with an arc, if I said just arc ED, in this case, and I didn't color it red like I did in that last, um, in the first slide, it might be E to D or E down to D. So usually there'll be a third point so that you can say it's arc EGD. In other words, it goes through that point. And so you can know which direction it's going to go. This arc is less than a semicircle, or less than half of the circle. So therefore, it is a minor arc. We call that a minor arc. The other side, E, in this case I put an F over here, so EFD, or DFE, is a major arc. It's an arc that actually goes more than a semicircle, or more than halfway around the circle. This would be called a major arc. And if it's a male circle, and it's the only one, then it's called a patriarch. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Let's look. I, I've used this vocabulary a little bit already, and that's called a central angle. Any angle where the vertex is the center of the circle, and they touch the outside parts there, right? or any vertex, basically. That's the most important part, that the vertex is in the center. I guess if this ang line stopped before it reached the outside of the circle, it would still be a central angle. So the central angle is when two line segments have a vertex in the center. Seems pretty straightforward. The other kind of angle that we may look at is an inscribed angle. And that's an angle where the vertex is on the circle. So on along some place along the circumference of the circle. The vertex is going to be along the outside of the circle. So this is an example of an inscribed angle. All right, the other two parts here are touching edges of the circle, and the vertex is on the circle. And now let's talk about measuring arcs. When we, we talk about arc measurements, we're going to use this equation. This equation should look very familiar, at least this part of it, 2 pi r. That's the equation for the circumference of a circle, or the distance around the outside of the circle. What this section tells us is whatever the degree, the angle, the central angle, whatever degree that is, divided by 360 is going to be multiplied times the circumference of that circle. And that makes sense. If it's um, 180, for example, we know that's a semicircle. 180 degrees divided by 360 degrees will give you 1 half. And 1 half times the circumference is the arc or the distance of a semicircle, half the circle. So that's going to be this formula that we use. We'll show you a couple questions there with this. The, this question says, what is the measure of the arc? Circle H has a diameter of 10 centimeters. What is the measure of a 96 degree arc? All the pieces of information we need are here, so we can just go ahead and fill in this equation. M is the measurement of the degrees, so M will be equal to 96 degrees over 360 degrees. And then we multiply that times 2 pi and r. Now you'll notice in this question that we're not given the radius. We are given the diameter. And the diameter of 10 means that we have a radius of 5. So we're going to have to put that in there. So what we would end up doing then is 96 divided by 360. And multiply that times 2 pi times 5, or in other words, 10 pi. And we will get that the distance of this arc, or the length of this arc, is 8.37. I never said, oh, there we go, centimeters. 8.37 centimeters. That's going to be the distance of this arc. With this next one, we have a 125 degree arc. 
So we'll put that distance in there, 125 degrees divided by 360 degrees. And we can plug that into a calculator, 125 divided by 360. Or if you can do that, you just want to do it in your head or simplify the fraction first, you can do it either way. And we're going to multiply times 2 pi. And our radius, again, we're given a diameter of 25. So our radius is 12.5. So 12.5 times 2 times pi. And that will give us our length of the arc being 27.27 approximately. All right, it's approximately equal to that length. And those are centimeters as well. So just to be clear here, this is the equation that we're going to use for finding any length of arc. With the 125 degree arc, it's definitely going to be a major arc. In the previous question, we used a 96 degree arc, and that was a minor arc. All right? So with those distances, it will help us to know exactly the length of our arc using this equation. The last part of this lesson um, about chords and arcs is this congruent chords if you have congruent chords, in other words, these two chords are the same length, then the arcs are also going to be the same length if they're inside the same circle. This is also true if you have two circles that are exactly the same, two congruent circles, and you have the same length arc inside both circles, then the or same length chord, I'm sorry, then the arc will be the same length as well, and that makes sense. So that is our lesson on chords and arcs. Hope that that's been helpful for you, and have a great day.